Um, another news piece here, we have this story regarding Quibi. Quibi is shutting down um, the short form video app that came out, what, I think somewhat six months ago, somewhat, right? Um, there was loads of stories behind the scenes of them, you know, reaching out to various creatives to create um, bespoke content, blah, 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 blah. The idea behind it was that you'd watch all the video content via your smartphone or tablet. Um, you couldn't necessarily stream it via TV or laptop. So it kind of tried to pivot away from the general streaming services we have at the moment. But unfortunately, it didn't work. And I have loads of things to say about this because, of course, as some of you know, I have an extensive career experience working within um, startups in the UK, especially um, some of the more crappier ones, some of the ones that haven't necessarily worked out the best, some of the ones with probably some of the worst founders I've ever worked for. Um, but uh, the experiences were very important in shaping the way that I look at startups and shaping the way that I look at things that I want to approach in terms of having my own business, blah, blah, blah. Loads of really good lessons to be learned from it. So let's dive on deep with this uh, story from The Verge. Could be shutting down. It continues. It says as follows. Sorry, Quibi, the short from mobile focused streaming service, is shutting down after just over six months of operation, making it one of the short lived streaming services to date, according to the Wall Street Journal. The company has since confirmed that it will be shutting down in a medium post by Jeffrey Katzenberg and Meg Whitman. A quote. We feel that we've exhausted all our options. As a result, we have reluctantly come to this difficult decision to wind down the business, return the cash to our shareholders and say goodbye to our colleagues with grace. The announcement reads, there is, any, there, there is any number of factors that can be pointed towards the unpacking of Quibi's demise, the launch of a mobile-only streaming service at the height of a global pandemic when users were stuck at home, the lack of any real breakout content that was compelling enough to tempt subscribers or the fact that the short-form video content has nearly infinite amount of free competition in the form of youtube tiktok and other platforms now let's get break the first bit down i think it's honorable that they decided to go out on their shield right in a really honorable way they decided when it was time to pull to pull the plug they didn't wait for the cash to completely run out and then decided to pull the plug like most companies i've worked for they decided hey this isn't going as right as we can do let's in return the money to the shareholders give our staff members an, a, an opportunity to plan their next steps give them ample amount of time to you know go out and seek other career options and just give us time to kind of recalibrate where we are great credit to them and it definitely goes a long way to showing the kind of character the people behind were involved in founding Quibi right good people but there's also a part of me that thinks especially from working in various startups that I'm pretty sure that there were people within the Quibi offices who were kind of raising the alarm about maybe the misstep that they made in terms of how they approached the streaming platform because if I remember correctly there wasn't any there wasn't any real push towards putting out free content to kind of tempt the customers into signing up to Quibi. Most of the stuff was behind the paywall. There was no taster option. There was no free option. There was no subs, um, discounted subscribe, discounted subscription rate for you to kind of join, join for the, you know, let's say half the price for the first month and then for you to test it, see if you like it and then kind of continue with that deal for the next six and then maybe ramp up to the standard price. There wasn't none of that going on. It was just mostly about, hey, this is a great app. You're going to use it a lot. It's behind a paywall, pay the money and use the thing. And then of course, the other point of the kind of, is real issue for them was that no matter how poor the app was i think part of the reason why it didn't succeed because it didn't have a standout hit show right they could have had a really clunky service you look at stuff like amazon prime the boys is a good example amazon prime video is a pretty horrible experience to use especially on your laptop more so on your smartphone but um the boys and some of their other original programming that they have on amazon prime video has done really well in spite of the actual ux or design of the actual site itself so that goes to show that if they would have invested a bit more money or no but if they would have kind of taken a little bit more care in the people that they invested in and not just kind of splash the cash around to various production houses and studios and writers who essentially have now been paid for doing absolutely nothing i think they would have been in a far better place it continues um quibi itself is choking up um the lack of success because the idea itself wasn't strong enough to justify a standalone streaming service or because of our timing the company will be notifying current subscribers as the final date that they'll be able to access quibi and i think that again that's true i'm sure there is a part of me that thinks 
you could launch successfully a mobile only or a smartphone only streaming service during the pandemic because everyone's on their phone. I would assume most people's screen time has gone up, you know, exponentially during uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So I'm sure there's an option, there's an avenue for somebody to start something like this and it to work. But again, I think the lack of that, the lack of strength and depth in terms of the video streaming options they had available on their platform, the lack of kind of interest outside of the people using Quibi is what necessarily led to their downfall. It continued to say it's not clear what will happen to the company's lineup of expensive star studded original shows and the short form films after the shutdown. Earlier reports indicated that Katzenberg had courted Apple, Warner Media, and Facebook to try and acquire their beleaguered streaming company earlier this year. When those efforts failed, Katzenberg um, reportedly tried to get Facebook and NBC um, Universal to pick up Quibi's content to no success. Quibi will continue to attempt to sell both the content and the underlying technology used in the apps in the coming months. However, Quibi launched on April the 6th, um, April the 6th, just over six months ago, um, with two plans, four ninety nine with ads and seven ninety nine with no ad free. The company sought to distinguish itself by focusing exclusively on mobile devices at launch, complete with an innovative um, system where each show was filmed and edited in both portrait and landscape formats, allowing it to be viewed in any orientation. What a crappy option there. Anyway, um, there was no free option outside the lengthy free trial and no TV apps until yesterday. Um, when the company launched its apps for the app, Apple TV and Android TV and Fire TV. Again, look at the misses. So that's why sometimes I don't have a lot of sympathy for some of these companies because I'm sure some of these um, omissions and some of these oversights were things that people within the company had spoken about. But sometimes when you have really headstrong leaders who have a very specific idea of what the app should be like in their mind, especially if it's their own baby, it's very hard for you to kind of divert them away from it. They just look at it as a distraction and they just, you know, and there's, there's this lionization around founders that stick to their plans and, you know, go for their goals, but it doesn't, it doesn't, those stories and those kind of, you know, lionized biographies don't take into account the people who kind of complemented or added to the success of the company who were kind of, you know, on the outskirts, right? the kind of entry level mid-level people who maybe threw a suggestion in there during all hands or during a company meeting that kind of added to the success or allowed the of company to maybe seek some other avenues that would be a little bit more profitable so um again it's hard to have sympathy because i think a lot of these things were glaring omissions that i'm sure people within the company would have said something about during a meeting or two it continues said despite 1.75 billion uh Katzenberg and co-founder Meg Manning raised Jesus Christ 1.75 billion this is why sometimes I think to myself like I never understand why some of my friends can be really um can be really uh can lack confidence when it comes to applying for jobs or can lack confidence when it comes to applying for grants or loans and think that their idea their plan isn't worth um, the money that they're ascribing to it when there's startups out here raising 1.75 billion for a video streaming app that only works on your smartphone right considering the amount of competition out there with free apps for video streaming considering the complete monopoly things like netflix and and youtube have on the video streaming platform for you to go out there and think that you have any opportunity to break um that industry to somehow take away some of their market share is insane right but you know that is obviously the goal of most um, entrepreneurs out there, right? To do the things that no one else can do. So no faulting your ambition, but then to do it in such a clunky way, right? Especially raising that amount in such a clunky way with so many missing pieces to the app that weren't necessarily there, right? They said they only just launched the app for flipping Apple TV and Android TV recently. It definitely should give you confidence that whatever idea you have, whatever plan and goal and dream you have, you owe it to yourself to pursue it because there are people out there raising 1.75 billion for a video streaming app. What's your main selling point is the fact that you can watch videos in both portrait and fucking landscape format. Who cares? What a crappy sell. So instead of them sort of pushing forward the fact that they have these really um, thought-provoking seminal TV shows and movies that are really going to move the needle in culture. They're boasting about the landscape and portrait formats of the videos. God almighty, God almighty. Um, it continues. Um, Quibi burst onto the scene with more uh, of a whimper than a bang. While it had plenty of big names attached to the content and even managed to game its way into the two Emmy Award wins, it never seemed to manage to actually garner many paid subscribers, which is the point, right? And again, this goes to show that a lot of the 
but I, I think of someone like a Joe Budden who people were made to, he made to, you know, he's made to feel crazy for you know, rumoredly asking for 250 million from Spotify. But there is something to be said for being able to command, for being able to put bums in seats and being able to attract an audience and take that audience with you no matter what platform you go onto. There is something to be said for it. And the fact that Joe Biden could actually say, I have the numbers that prove people signed up to Spotify to listen to my podcast only during these months or during this year or during this contract should go a long way in terms of kind of adding to the amount of zeros you put on his, con you put onto his um, renewed uh, contract. It should go some long way because if people like this can raise 1.75 billion off of projections of how many uh, subscribers they're going to have on their platform and not actually hard numbers and actual users using the app day to day uh, i don't want anyone to feel less than you should never be made to feel less than because these people out here are swindling cash like no business and again i'm happy they're giving back their money to investors because some of these companies they do they do this sort of like bait and switch where they go out there and raise money off the back of an idea that has no market validity or viability, I think whatever that word is, right? They go out and raise some money off the back of, a, of an app that has no market viability. They then uh, leverage that app to raise other loans. Um, they obviously show off their ability and talent to maybe take a company from zero to 100 employees, just have some shiny office in the middle of central London and then exit and have a, and then that company completely gets swallowed up by another company that then goes in and ends up kind of, you know, uh, taking their talent and ship and chucking away everything else that's not really needed. Um, but again, God almighty, 1.75 billion, mad. Um, a report from app tracking firm Sensor Tower back in July claimed that Quibi lost over 90% of its subscribers after the initial three month trial ran out with just 72,000 of its roughly 910,000 users who had signed up at launch sticking around as paid subscribers. Quibi has refuted those numbers claiming that they were incorrect by order of magnitude but has never provided any actual subscriber counts of its own, which it shouldn't, right? It, you shouldn't be doing that. But God Almighty, again, Quibi's out. Again, um, respect to the founders for putting their neck out there and trying to do something, right? And trying to add their sort of, um, try and leave their mark on the startup uh, timeline, right? Um, that's basically the dream of most entrepreneurs to go out there and leave some sort of indentation onto the world. But the app was pretty terrible. The idea wasn't that great. The market itself that they were trying to infiltrate is heavily, heavily crowded. Um, they didn't need, you know, they needed to come in there with a bang. They came in with a whimper, grand opening, grand closing. Again, um, I'm glad they were able to give the employees a heads up, investors back their money, and maybe kind of, you know, dust themselves down and go back again. But again, this is a cautionary tale for a lot of people out there, you know, especially employees and people that are trying to get involved in some of these startups. Vet them as well as you can. And for the founders out there, maybe follow Quibi's lead, isn't it? If it's not going well and it's kind of isn't necessarily living up to your expectations, yep, that you're using, maybe do the honorable thing and pull the plug before it's pulled for you and give your employees and staff an option to go out there and seek other pastures new, isn't it? Um, the worst thing is being kind of held to ransom or being left in a state of purgatory, not knowing where you stand, leaders not wanting to lead, and then eventually it kind of affecting you the most as an employer, as opposed to the founder. So again, credit to the guys for deciding to pull the plug when they did. But again, an, another cautionary tale within the 